Like I said, I'm not an expert and I can only tell you about my experience. And, uh, and I think the, the most essential thing I've learned about script writing is, is really not to talk about script writing. Uh, the, the, and, and also I just want to say that I don't come from uh, any filmmaking background. I, wasn't, I never went to film school. I never studied it formally. And I always think that if I can really do it, anyone can do it. Uh, because I really, it was all from inst instinct. And I worked for a film school, and I worked for studios, and I've written for them. And you all pretty much approach it. You, you, you realize that they just have the technical term for something that you already kind of know. I started acting, actually. That's what was my initial interest. And all my writing I learned from acting. And everyone has a different way to get there, but mine was completely from acting. I loved acting, but I just couldn't. I wasn't very good at it, and I didn't really like it very much, like in terms of being in front of a camera. I liked it in theatre. So, but I loved, loved directing. So, my writing was informed by, my, by learning all the, all the stuff to do with, with acting. And uh, so one of the first rules, like I said, is not to talk about screenwriting. I always think that it's just best to talk about story. And the best way for me to show the importance of story is to start with an exercise. <laughs> How excited are you? <laughs> so I need two volunteers. Two volunteers. Two. To do what? To do something, I'll show you now. You, you'll find out. Two, you two. Okay, great. So I need, um, I'm going to get a clean of water. Yeah, um, so, I, I need, uh, anyone got a scarf? We need to blindfold you. <laughs> You've got a scarf? You've got one? Great. Uh, is that okay? Is that too thick? I can use this one. Ah, uh, okay. As long as you don't um, So, I'm going to put a bottle here. One of you will be the guard. Um, I'll make you the guard and I'll make you the robber. I'm blindfolded. I? Yes, you're blindfolded, and the whole point is you have to guard this bottle, make sure, but you can't touch it. But you make sure he can't take it. If he touches you at any point in this exercise, it means he's caught you. Mm. So you have to be very quiet. So I'm going to spin you around, take you to different different parts of the room, and then you have to try and find your way back to this bottle, and you have to try and take it from him. So take the whole it from yes, him. the whole he'll point is to be you. very. He'll ha he'll be guarding it, but the whole point is to be very very quiet. That's the secret of this exercise. Yes, so he doesn't catch you because if he can hear you, he can touch you. I'm blindfolded. Well. You're blindfolded. You're both blindfolded. And, and the bottle's there. And the bottle's there. In this case, if you get the bottle first, or no, you just have to get it from him. He's going to be holding yes. it. Yes, yes, he's going to be guarding it. But if he touches you before you get the bottle, that means you're out. But if I touch out. him and he's got the bottle, the bottle's mine. No, he, he's not allowed to hold the bottle. Your target is just okay. to get the bottle so it's on the floor. that's on the floor and make sure he doesn't catch you in the process. Yeah? yeah. Ready? Okay, yeah, I'll blindfold you. It's very exciting. Yeah, can yeah. you see? Yes, one No? Great. <laughs> and you're okay with your beanie? Mm -hmm. I hope I can see. Well, I can use the uh, peak to. It's completely. Completely black. Mm -hmm. Okay, I trust you. Okay, hang on a sec, I'm going to spin you in a second. Yeah, right. <coughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to spin you first. Okay. Right. Now you have to find the bottle to guard it. Ooh, <coughs> got it, got it. I'm too fast, I've got yeah. oh, Okay, sorry. Um, come this way. <laughs> come this way again, 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 okay. again, again. Right, I'm going to spin you around again. Okay. I'll try and get the bottle. So, the bottle's where you left it, or are you going to move it? No, I won't move it, and he's not allowed to move it either. Oh. Yeah, you just have to guard it. And I'm not allowed to touch it? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to need a chair or something, can you warn me? Uh, no, 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 what you have to do is you, uh, the, the chair, picking the chair is part of the fun, because you have to, the whole point is not to make noise. So just, just go, go for it. And you're not allowed to do that either. <laughs> yes, just, exactly.
gøre. <laughs> right, I'm cool to me. Yeah, you're cool to me. <laughs> Uh, anyone else? So these, well anyone else want to volunteer this exercise or any other two? You wrote the actions first yeah. for your Sometimes I first approach first. to the screenplay. Yeah. When do you get into the dialogue then? Do you actually narrate your story through the dialogue instinctively? Because obviously you're, you're fond of dialogue and is that I, why you do it? No, 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 I'm saying I wasn't a fond of dialogue until about two, two years ago. Uh, before I used to let the actors say everything. Uh, I was like, just say it, just say it like this and find a way, uh, as long as they're in character. But um, uh, I write the actions first, even the treatment, because everything we're writing is a treatment first. Yeah, yeah. And once a dialogue comes to my mind, I will put it down, I'll put it as a no, or I'll write the scene with the dialogues. But mostly I write the, the action first. The dialogue really just comes from me imagining being in that in the situation, really. And I repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. But with the dialogue, yes, I write afterwards or within. Uh, but someone said, I know another director, and he said, whenever I can use, when I can, whenever I can describe something, I, I use action. I try to use action before I use dialogue. I don't do this, but I think it's a nice rule to have. Any, it's a nice thought to have to just get you to think about what's happening. Because cinema is about what you see. That's cinema. It's cinema in its entirety. Otherwise, put it on a radio. Because that's the problem I had with the BBC short. It was just dialogue. And I'm like, well, you might as well just wait at a radio program. What's the point? It's two people in a room talking. You see, you know, la, 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 la. It's, you, it's just radio. This is cinema. It's, you're supposed to gorge in the imagery. And not just gorge with dialogue. And this is what I don't like. I don't like... Uh, people in a room talking. I don't like people in a room talking. It's just um, because uh, Hitchcock had a really good thing because Hitchcock was a very visual director. And he said, if you can switch it off, if you can put the volume down and people still know what's happening, that is cinema. Hmm. And it is. When you're writing, that's the difference between now you're building up to a screenplay from just a story. When you're building up to a screenplay, now you're describing. Not describing what's happening, but you're describing, yeah, describing what's happening is probably the shortest way of doing it. Uh, why have your character say something when they can just do it, express it through some action, or you can express something through an imagery through, I don't know, the famous imagery which people like to show a character lost, it's always them, and the foreground is massive, they're probably like a huge lake or something, and the character stood, and that's like a, a symbol of loneliness, and we get a lot from that. Um, and you could write that rather than writing, oh, I'm lonely, I am. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and the example I put is about, uh, the great example I put about all the stuff I've talked about is I told people to write about, think of a story of a guy going to make, commit suicide and how that we express that visually, that this guy is going to commit suicide, has made a decision, the morning, it's his last morning in his flat and immediately after that he's going to jump off a, a bridge. And I ask people, what would you do? And you get different ideas. Some people say, oh, I'll do a voiceover, which I, I don't like voiceovers. Usually, there's very few. Sometimes I do, there's very few that work. Sometimes I like them. Um, so voiceover, so it's him talking about his life and stuff. I said, see, that's one way. But, and then he said, and showing him like, you know, putting the pills or showing how he's gonna commit suicide. Some people say, I'd show him practicing first and others, and I said, and you said, oh, yeah, that's the first idea. And how did you progress to that? You know, and different people come out with different ideas. And one idea I had when we were just kind of brainstorming, I said, do you know what I'll do? Um, and it's really simple, but you'd have him doing everything normal. He brushes his teeth or does whatever. And then he leaves, but he doesn't close the door. It's, and you're wondering why he doesn't need to really close the door. Why doesn't he care? There's something he just doesn't care. And then you're asking your question, why didn't he close the door? I didn't care about he was closing the door. And he probably thought, and then when he commits suicide, you realize after he wanted people to come, maybe, I don't know, he didn't care, he just stopped caring. Or there's something that he does that he doesn't care about. Um, and I thought maybe that could be an idea. It's, it's maybe a cheap idea, but it's an idea better than the typical voiceover. <clears throat> because that's also what you have to think. You think of your idea, but you think, how can I make it different? How can I make it different and more interesting? The thing is to be interesting, uh, make it more interesting. I would ask that, and I thought, if I was watching a cinema, I saw a guy brushing his teeth, and he left his door wide open and walked out. I'd be thinking, why did he leave his door open? Is it for a caretaker? But at least I'd still be asking. The question's gonna be answered after, but I would be asking that question. 
not just watching like a typical thing like I know he's about to commit suicide like okay I know he's about to commit suicide then I'm thinking okay why does he want to commit suicide okay I can ask that why does he want to commit suicide I can ask that because that's interesting but I'm thinking oh god I'm watching another suicide movie oh. yeah like we're finishing like uni this year yeah. and so like obviously the next step is like right let's try and get into companies and make as many contacts and everything but like what did you do as like a first stepping stone into the industry sort of thing? Was it just sort of like you got a few awards for making like a film? Uh, yeah. Um, I sort of kind of feel I'm in the industry. Maybe I am, but um, it helps that I'm working now. I'm working as a writer. That's what I do all day. I just write, so that's that's helpful. But for me, the first time I, I remember leaving, I'd already done stuff before. And I, I was at a uni, I was talking to my old union actually to writers and they were like, I'm scared, what am I going to do after I finish uni? Uh, for me what I started doing, I interned, I interned when I was way too old to intern because everyone was like 18 and I was way too old to be intern. But I still interned because I wanted to just be around people, not just sitting around. And I would recommend you interning. I interned, I read, and I know other people that I did, I was a reader. And you'd never believe uh, production companies are very scary because I was a reader and I realised I'm actually the development department. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd read people's script and like you make recommendation and notes and then they use those notes to talk to the writers and I don't know anything. It's crazy. And I was the oldest person and the rest of them were like, you know, 18, barely like, you know, they're like, oh yeah, I think this film's really good. And you're like, um, they used that to actually talk to the writers and, and go to the next stage. It was an old green light something. It was crazy. So I would intern at, a, I'd intern at a production company. I think that's a good idea. I think a lot of networks, network, because I hate networking, but uh, knowing people helps a lot. It's the usual stuff. In your future films, how rigidly do you stick to the prescription about structure? You know, you have three acts and the first one has to be 30 minutes and oh, you have a climax this. and a turning point and then... He's also shaking his I can't stand that. <laughs> I really hate... Because I only learned rules about writing when I went to film school and then they'll say, oh yes, no, I really like this bit because obviously this is the beginning of the first act and I'm like, I don't know, I just wrote it because it made sense, you know? I'm not saying I'm like this rebel and I'm like, oh, it's all organic and I'm, <laughs> such, I'm such, such a natural talent, but... Sometimes rules work for some people, sometimes they don't. That's why I don't like the screen, screenwriter books, because they will put act yeah. one, act two, act three, and you just said doing... Yeah. And I've yeah. seen so many films that do not follow the structure. So many incredibly classical films that don't... Oh, they do, and I can't see it. Maybe I can't see it, but... Because what people don't even realise, they also, what they do as well, is they use the the film to show an example of a film and this is what happened, this is the first act, the second act, the third act. What people don't know is that film is completely different to the script. So why we're doing the script, how to learn how to script write on that version of the film that wasn't actually originally written. Because between the script and the finished product, mm -hmm. there's been editing mm -hmm. of that script with the actors on the set maybe, mm -hmm. but there's been editing actually cutting the film. And cutting the film, you're cutting pages that, that you couldn't live without in the original script. So filmmaking, when they talk about script writing books and they refer to the films exam as examples, I'm like, firstly, some s scenes were invented on the scene, on the, on the day of shooting, A, and B, it was absolutely, it's when you're edited, you're chopping a new film completely. So it has nothing to do with script. So then they find the rhythm of the act one, the act two, and all these rules in maybe the editing process. But you could have gone through all these um, process of act one, act two, act three, but when you see on screen, you're still thinking, you know, it's still, mm. I, I really don't believe in that. I really just, I believe in kind of middle, mid, beginning, middle, end, roughly, like what's happening at the beginning, mm. introductions, what, what's gonna change now. Um, but I really just think, because I've watched films that don't go by anything prescribed, but I'm still engaged. That's why I always say that it's about is this interesting? What's going to happen next? If I'm still asking that question, mm -hmm. if I'm seeing something, it doesn't necessarily follow the, the act. But it, it, so many people have written these script books, but mm -hmm. you're like, where's your script? That's, since it's about just three acts and it's about turning points. And since it's just about this, right? Where, where are your brilliant scripts? Because it's not about that. I think it's really, for me, it's always, I think it's kind of a bit detrimental because it, and also, the, I met um, I met um, 
I was at a lab, a lab in, in Greece. I met this uh, consultant. She was remarkable because I was because at this lab they were doing this whole three act rules that stuff, and I'd never had that. So I was really overwhelmed. So they were like, well, you know, this is how you structure it, and this is how you do it. And I was like, oh, I can't, I can't deal with this, I can't. And then I spoke to the consultant, and she's worked on many scripts before, and she said to me, do you know, this is just one way of telling a story. When you go in Arab culture, they say the story's completely different to Hollywood movies. Completely different. And they said, an African story making, very different to Arab, very different to, to thingy. The structure's completely different. It's not about three acts, it's not about turning points. It's completely different, yet many people love these films and they go and see them, at least in that culture, whether we could understand them. I'm not sure. I don't know whether it would be our thing. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But I don't believe in it. But I also believe in some people need rules, others don't. Some people need the guidelines, others it stifles them too. So if you're really lost, why not? You can yeah. read it and see yeah. what it does for you. I, I have never, I've never, I've written from what I feel and what yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah.